Powered by Ford. For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen here at CES 2012 with uh, Will here from, what is it, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, how do, how do you say it? I say Ubuntu. You say Ubuntu? Yes. See there, now you've heard it from the horse's mouth, so stop emailing us. Anyway, we're here to talk about something that you guys have been clamoring for, and that is the Ubuntu TV. Uh, so what is the Ubuntu TV? So Ubuntu TV represents our progression from the traditional uh, laptop and desktop market into new form factors such as TVs and tablets and smartphones. And what we're looking at today is the, the initial proof of concept, the initial vision for the, uh, for the Ubuntu TV. So what is the vision? So the vision for Ubuntu TV is that you take your, all the boxes that normally live under your, under your TV and you put them all inside the TV with a single remote control and a single interface so you've got all of your media in one place uh, and it's a much easier experience. Okay, so let's just first get this out of the way. Is Ubuntu coming out with hardware? No. Ubuntu is not about, TV, uh, about hardware. Um, we do software, we do operating system, and the, we, we speak with OEM manufacturers to, to get the hardware out. Okay, so if you're talking to manufacturers, is this something that will continue as an open source? Absolutely. This, this product is fully open source. You can go and download the code for it today. Um, the, the, the source code that exists in the future will also be open source. So there are some other set-top TVs that use like Linux as a foundation. There's uh, a lot of other projects like XBMC, for example, Boxy, for example, uh, has been able to partner with content providers like your Netflixes of the world, but as such, uh, recently has stopped uh, doing the community version, and, and, and I, I can only speculate that part of that may have to do with those sorts of licenses. Is that something that you're going to run into, and is it, how are you... Um, how are you taking that challenge? Well, it's impossible for me to say what's going to happen in the future, but we're, we're here this week to speak with these content providers and get these relationships and arrangements going. Uh, Ubuntu will stand by its, uh, by its ethos of, of freedom and, and openness, but uh, if a particular uh, vendor has some restrictions, then we'll have to see what we can do about that. So is this something that, say, for example, a manufacturer could come and use uh, Ubuntu TV as a starting place and then put some closed source stuff on top of it to do a vendor that doesn't want their DRM to be opened? Well, I think, I think that the, the content is very important. And if it's a necessity that there is some closed source DRM uh, codecs in there, then I think it's important that we embrace that to allow people to get the most content available on their device. That's, that's great to hear. So w now, as far as uh, the interface, how is this coming together? Well, it's, it's come together pretty quickly. We, we released the code on Monday. We've been working on it for a little while. Uh, what we see is a proper Unity interface running on top of normal Ubuntu. Uh, it's, uh, it's fast. It, this is running on an Atom processor. Uh, it's smooth, and uh, it's, it looks really nice. It, I think the design is really good. So after seeing uh, Ubuntu um, evolve over the years, Unity take over from GNOME, I think it's starting to make sense seeing Ubuntu TV. Uh, is this kind of what we should expect to see in maybe a tablet version in the near future? Well, I, I'm not going to speculate about what that's going to look like, but uh, it's called Unity for a reason, it, to bring a, a unified interface across, across these devices. And as you say, the, the, the vision starts to make more sense now. We can see how it fits all these new devices. Okay, so tell me about how, if you get it right now, what services are built in and how it takes advantage of those services and, and, and kind of brings those to the user. Sure, so today it is just a proof of concept. The, the only functionality you're going to get is the ability to play back videos. Uh, or if you go to the website and the wiki, you'll find out how to do that. You can download the code and use it as a media browser on your normal Ubuntu PC. Okay, and what about web services like your Hulus and your... Um, your YouTubes and your Amazons of the world that uh, that aren't tied to some sort of uh, DRM. Well, that would be that would be very interesting people to speak to. So we're we're here. We're meeting with as many people as we can, and hopefully we'll get those deals done. Wonderful. So now, where can people go and download this and put this on their old netbook and hook it up to the TV and get a Logitech USB remote or whatever you know have you. Excellent. Yeah, go to ubuntu.com slash TV. You'll find there's a tab for contributors. Go there. There's a link to the wiki. There's a link to mailing list. There's IRC channels. These guys are ready to help you get it working. Awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, for continued coverage of all things CES, head over to revision3.com slash CES. And once again, we'd love to thank our wonderful sponsor, Ford, for powering our CES coverage.
With Sync Services, you can use the power of your voice to stay in control of your Ford Focus driving experience. You can even use Sync to get the current weather report for where you are or where you are going. Sync Services make it happen, all while your hands stay on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Weather. Weather. Press the voice button and say a city and state. San Francisco, California. San Francisco, California. At 2.18 p.m., it's partly sunny and it's 51 degrees with a slight breeze. Thanks to Ford for powering our CES coverage. Here at CES 2012, and guess who I found? It's, it's the kitty. Hello, kitty. How's, how's the show been so far with you? Huh? Oh, she's, she's not really purring, but yeah. Right, let's go find something else.